Good or bad, I think it's a legitimate rite of passage for all engineers to at some point build an air cannon. So by that logic, I'm not an engineer. Today we're going to remedy that though. So I'm going to be making this air cannon out of PVC and to do this safely for at least the pressure chamber I need to make sure I'm using pressure rated PVC. So let's make the pressure chamber. I need a valve to be able to input air pressure so I'm using an old bike inner tube. Whilst the two part epoxy that I'm using to attach the valve to the inside of the pressure chamber sets up I'm going to begin assembly of the pressure chamber itself. One end will have the end cap and valve fitted and the other end has a step down adapter to interface to a pneumatic valve. I should have seen it coming, but unfortunately the epoxy didn't work on the rubber of the bicycle inner tube. So into the bin that part goes, and we'll fix that problem with a proper screw-in valve. I want this cannon to have a kind of contiguous appearance, as in the same overall diameter as best possible, to look kind of cohesive. So I'm going to fit this sleeve, which is the same diameter as the barrel, over the pressure chamber, modifying it as best possible to fit around the pneumatic valve. So with everything assembled, it's time for a first test fire. Three, two, one, and disappointment central. I just wasn't getting anywhere near the power I was expecting. I tried modifying the valve itself. I replaced the solenoid with an electromechanical pneumatic valve, but no dice. On closer inspection, I'm not sure if anyone's actually had any success on YouTube with this particular sprinkler valve. So I picked up one that I have seen people have success with and went ahead with that one. Expecting the solenoid with this unit though was still not going to give me the power I wanted. I disassembled the sprinkler valve, fitted a brass adapter, and connected up the electro-pneumatic solenoid to this guy. I kept the original sprinkler valve solenoid only to minimize the amount of destructive modifications I'd have to do to this unit. And wouldn't you know, that did nothing at all. On closer inspection, I realized the seal around the projectile, the tennis ball, probably wasn't sufficient. There's quite an air gap between the outside of the tennis ball and the inside of the barrel. So I thought if I added a second wall to the barrel, that might fix the issue. I also added features to the barrel to allow me to interlock in a smaller diameter barrel giving me the ability to shoot not only tennis balls, but these mini tennis balls, and more importantly, GoPros. Prior to final assembly, just as a safety precaution, I also added some fiberglass tape over the pressure vessel. Then after modifying the sleeve that goes over the pressure vessel one last time, we can see how it shoots. And how does it shoot? Thanks for watching today guys, I hope you liked this video, if you did, please chuck us a thumb, and if you want to see more of this kind of content in the future, please subscribe.